Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to make sure you know all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on all new episodes of Wade's World, Boob Windows and Long Boxes, our hard R movie reviews, and so much more, all completely uncensored. Access starts for as little as $1 a month, full videos when you pledge $3 a month. Check us out at the link in all of our show notes, or just go straight to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. Me hearties, and welcome once again to Full Stream Ahead. I be your captain, Charlie, the Professor Esser, and with me as always is my skinny rich friend. It's Moz. Hey, Moz. Welcome back to another episode of Loki. Season 1, Episode 2, The Variant. Mobius puts Loki to work, but not everyone at the TVA is thrilled about the God of Mischief's presence. Our director tonight is Kate Heron. Our writers are, of course, are Alyssa Karasik, Michael Walden, Jack Kirby, and, of course, Stan Lee. Get those created by credits. And that's everybody. They're written by was Alyssa Karasik and Michael Wald- Waldron was our created by. Okay. So, tonight's episode uh, takes us back to a quaint little town in, uh, I believe it was Oshkosh, Wisconsin, to a local Renaissance fair. We're in... 1985. 1985, you know. Uh, tonight we're going to party like it's 1985. And... Um, as we go into it, uh, we are in the midst of an inc- of not an incursion, but a variant uh, causing mischief, uh, and the TV agents have to go in. These are not the uh, TV agent TVA agents we've grown attached to, but a new and different group who uh, quite quickly get ambushed get mind-controlled in a way that we have not seen since the Scarlet Witch, and although with green energy, not red, and uh, then proceeds to beat up our uh, our TVA agents to the song, I Need a Hero, which, of course, opens that immediate question, who really is the hero in this scene? Uh, she escapes with a hostage, and that's the start of our show. Um, we have Mobius getting permission to take Loki into the uh, on a mission to track down this variant. Although it's interesting because we see the variant has already left this timeline. You know, we know that she's left, but they go there looking for her, which is. Always the thing. They're coming there too late. Um, But when they're there, this I find interesting. Because we have Loki basically try to stall for time, try to distract um, Mobius and the gang. But uh, nothing he says there turns out to be wrong. He says, I see a plot. I see something deeper. The timekeepers are in danger. You know, she's plotting, or the... We don't don't want to say she yet, because we don't know that yet, but yes, the variant is plotting something, and Loki knows what it is. Does he, though? Well, that's the question. Does he or does he not? Because here's what I'll say. He was right when we get to the end. What her plan was, seemingly, was exactly everything she said, or everything that Loki said. That she's attacking the Time Variance Authority, attacking the Time Keepers, and... um, But that's something they they know already. I'm sorry? That's nothing that's news to them. He found out about it because they told him about it. 
No, so they, actually, they don't know that she's trying to attack the timekeepers. Well, she's been attacking the timekeepers. No, she's been attacking the the TVA agents. Oh, so, see- right, right, that's what I meant. She's been attacking the the TVA agents yes. and throwing up timelines. Okay, fair enough. So yes, so yeah, but I'm, I, don't, I don't think that that requires a special like Kojak degree to guess that she's trying to attack the time. You know, well. Actually, maybe does. I mean, the the I get. I mean, arguably, you're arguably you're right. It's logical that she should know that they might understand that. But at the same time, I, I can. I, what my point is is that it's very clear. Nothing he says in this scene is a lie. Hmm. They they know it's a delaying tactic, but honestly, if they had gone out looking for the variant, all they're actually going to do is just increase the amount of. Uh, time dilation anyway hmm. because we do see that within a certain area they can contain the the problem that presumably when they set off that time it doesn't wipe out that whole universe it just clears the tent because nothing outside of the tent was really that problematic to the timeline it was hmm. just what was in the tent what happened in the tent was where things got to be problematic and they just reset everything to where it was supposed to be uh, which is another interesting point because you get into this this idea that when there is a variation, it has to do with the way that things play out from that moment in the timeline. It seems to me they're killing branches, right? So if that's true, that you cannot go back and affect the same time branch, right? That anytime mm-hmm. you change something, it's a whole new branch. It's a whole new version of you. So if they're going out, what they seem like doing, not just l- little pockets of the tent, that whole reality is now bifurcated into a different reality because they affected change. And now that whole reality, that whole branch has to be eliminated. All those 8 billion people die. Not necessarily. And this is this is just something, and this goes into what we see at the end of this episode. Um, so spoilers for the whole episode. When, when, so just to jump ahead, when we get the attack on the timeline and we get the multiple destruction, you know, the the multiple points in time that are getting all of these time charges sent to them, basically wiping out moments in history. Hmm. What is actually, what we see is as the branches branch out, you would actually see the sacred timeline start to bend with the branches. So that essentially what's happening is that there is a gravity to the branches. So that when you eliminate the parts that were not supposed to be here, everything else kind of just falls back into where it's supposed to be. You know, like, so, for example, the lady may remember that some weirdos came to the rent fair that day, but, you know, weirdos come to the rent fair every day. That seeing those weirdos there doesn't necessarily so it's not necessarily the secret timeline pruning branches, but they're just bending and shaping the branches. Mm-hmm. Exactly, it's like they don't blink everyone out of existence; hmm. just the things that have been knocked out of existence, causing it to bend the other way. Exactly, which is again something we see when Loki finds the secret, as it were. Uh, but before then, we do get a, we do get a nice nice interplay between um, both Mobius and Renslayer. Um, mm-hmm. Mobius is a little upset because apparently Renslayer has another agent who's also bringing her trophies, um, which is another one of these interesting questions about what is what is really happening here, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, is this other agent who is who is going out and um, uh, bringing her back stuff? Is it someone that that she is working with in the Time Variance Authority as a helper, or is she maybe have someone on the side who is giving her things, and maybe she's looking the other way because she's getting them? Because it's it's interesting that she does have this very fancy office with all these nice things, and maybe it's that she is um, 
maybe it's that she is uh, just likes to collect them, but it's all on the up and up. Or maybe there is someone who keeps on coming to her from outside the timeline, like a Kang the Conqueror, who is manipulating her with these sort of trophies as his uh, gifts of love, as it were. Hmm. So I find it interesting. I'm curious as to what it all means, but we don't know yet, obviously. But uh, um, they feel that Loki ruined the app. I don't think Loki ruined the app at all. I no. think they were never going to track down where the variant went. All the, all, it, it's easy to blame him, but... but he hey, really if you were going to get it right, you would have gotten it right by now. Exactly. You had exactly. it in you to get it right. You got farther, you got closer to the variant than you ever had before, and you just weren't prepared. Don't blame this on Loki. Mm -hmm. He got you closer than you ever did before. And again, when I say that Loki doesn't lie to them here, what mm -hmm. he says is exactly what the variant was planning is true. Which is, I think, the real selling point of this is that Loki does have insight into this, in, into into the variant, into the other variant. Loki does know what is causing problems here. So he also knows what a Loki would do given a mm -hmm. certain set of surroundings, and he can have exactly. a pretty good guess of, hey, what would I do to get out of this? Why would I be doing this? What would motivate? Yeah, it's probably this. So yeah. Exactly, and that is the idea, that there is clearly something going on here that he sees, because it is this idea, why is she stealing the time bombs? Why is she stealing the, the bombs? What are, those, what are those for? Why did she take a hostage? She's never taken a hostage before. And I, we're using she because we do know the reveal, but yes. Um, you know, why, why is the variant suddenly taking hostages? And all those factors go together. He takes a they took a hostage because they needed information. They're taking the uh, pruning debt charges because they're going to prune a lot of stuff. They're planning an attack of some sort. So it is very interesting that he's not lying, but that obviously they're all being mad because because the variant got away. Hmm. And they put on they, they they then have Loki do paperwork which is, you know, the ultimate punishment for the God of Mischief. Although, arguably, is a great test of his skills. Because while he's in there, he gets to go through things. He learns about Ragnarok. Though, arguably, he already knew about Ragnarok when he watched, watched his life. But it is, you know, it is seeing it. And that is where he comes to understand what 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 is interesting about apocalypse events because if everybody dies yes no one will know however it's interesting with ragnarok because not everybody died in ragnarok of course obviously a lot of asgardians got away and many more were killed by thanos but there are many who did survive so arguably you could if you were there and you did certain things, it actually wouldn't, it would cause problems so long as everyone who was supposed to get off got off. But if you saved an extra person, then they would actually be a variant. So hmm. Ragnarok is actually a bad example of this, which is why it's good that they don't go to Ragnarok. Hmm. But when they go to Pompeii, they see exactly what they needed to see because nobody survived Pompeii. Anyone that was there died. Anyone which is why, <laughs> which, which is why they had to find a place that would. And actually, when and I'm going to get to that in a moment. When they're talking, the place they actually go, which is a uh, rocks cart uh, mega store that was used as a shelter during a hurricane, that will eventually be blown away, and everyone in it will die. But what is perfect about that, it is that, yes, it is an apocalypse, but it is also a slow-moving apocalypse, hmm. which means that the time from when the apocalypse starts, which is when everyone's inside and no one can leave, to the actual moment when the Roxcart building gets destroyed is probably like 
two, three, four hours, maybe even more. You know, that all these people are going to die. They're not going to be able to get out of here because they can't get anyone in there to get them out. And eventually this storm is just going to tear that building apart. But it's going to take so much time between when they go in and when they don't come out. So she can go there. So, like, when you think about Mount Vesuvius, they've got to be there at a very specific time for the apocalyptic event because it happens so fast. But if it's something like a hurricane that's going to take this long time, where you're going to have a target that you know everyone that was in there died and no one got out alive, that's when you can really be hidden. There's also another interesting thing that Loki says before he goes on his first adventure with the TVA, which is about duplication, which is not illusion. And this is interesting, and of course a lot of people seized on this because it was a very specific thing he said, and also specifically that he says it is a mirror copy of your being as it exists in that moment. Rather than just, a, it's not an illusion, it's a molecule by molecule recreation. Which people have seen to say that maybe Loki didn't die in Endgame or in Infinity War. That mm-hmm. that really, that he just did a duplication spell that no one caught. Because as we see, he's very good right. at his magic. And he can do it very subtly without people noticing. It's like he does everything very subtly without people noticing. And so perhaps that was the spell he used there, which explains why people point out that he uses his non-dominant hand to try and stab Thanos rather than his normal dominant hand and because it's the mirror image of himself. Hmm. And, of course, because it is an exact molecular reproduction, that's why nobody notices. So, hmm. interesting theory. That's, that's out there. People have discussed it. it. I'd buy that. Yeah. I like it, honestly. I do, too. Um, Getting back to to the rocks art, the rocks cart uh, incident, um, where we are dealing with um, when he he gets approval to go there. And, of course, that was the other thing where because um, the, the variant... Intentionally left a clue, which was the uh, blue. Was it a uh, blue, blue bubble? It, yeah, I forget what it was called now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the the blueberry <laughs> spelled funnily, blueberry gum. That it was this very blueberry gum from this exact point in history. And by the way, it's so much fun when they're running through all the apocalypses over the next few years. You know, the death of the swallow. In 2047, yeah. and it's like, yeah, really screwed up the ecosystem. Although I'm surprised that that counts as an apocalypse because, again, how many people, how was that an apocalypse in the sense that we've seen it, whereas of people being wiped out? But who knows? I guess maybe the maybe the swallows took a bunch of people with them. <laughs> or, or it had something to do with, you know, some ecosystem chain that was broken, like, you know, bees not able being able to po- uh, pollinate. So yeah. we can't have produce, we can't have food to feed, uh, you know. And and yeah, couple so, on top of that, how long is this after the snap? Well, this one? Well, I guess they can go anywhere, right? So it doesn't yeah. really matter. Yeah, well, that, well, that's the thing is the snap was supposed to happen. So everything that's happening in this right now, well, as I say, the Time Variance Authority, time passes differently. It's outside of time. So Loki in this one is from... The first Avengers movie, which I think was, I think, seven years prior, you know? Or, yeah, I think seven years prior. Okay, yeah, so he was he was taken from that moment well before. Exactly, well before any of this right, stuff happened right, in, right, like, right. about 2013. So that's his perspective, but which is one of those fun things he makes when he says to, when he says to um, the Pompeians, as he's speaking in his Greek, um... <laughs> Not ancient Greek, though, so, you know, I'm sure there's some that, that's not how they spoke in, in actual. <laughs> and right. actually, uh, was that, yeah, that was Greek, yes. Pompeii is, is in Greece. It was a it was a Roman tourist destination, but it was still technically Greece. <laughs> um, as, he's, as he's speaking, I'm sure there was a lot of nerds like, that's not actually how they spoke in Pompeii at the time. <laughs> um, you know, 
Because it's weird. Linguists do work very hard to reproduce like what sounds actually sounded like back in the day. Which I'm is sure. It's fun. It's fun. I, I, one of my one of my favorite YouTubes is a uh, native lang, and it's just this. And he really gets a lot of details about how languages evolve and what does this sound like and what is that. Oh, wow. And it's also it's just your he's just a very soothing talker with very simple cartoons. But it's a, it's a really fun video if you just if if you're a, if you're a language nerd and I am, it's a lot of fun. Um, oh. But anyway, um, what was my point? I had a point. I forgot it. Okay. But, but, um, and and um, Mobius was really oh, when he scared. says he's from the future. Right. He says he's from the future. He says, I know this because I'm from the future. And then he looks at Mobius and says, we are from the future, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which is, that? It, are they from the future? <laughs> time variance, the you know, time passes differently. They're not really right. from the future. They're not really from the past. They're from when they are from. Right, they're just from a um, relative time. That's it. Yes. So uh, the one, the one guard uh, does not, who is the guard that does not like Loki, does not trust mm -hmm. Loki, and uh, she, she decides that Mobius is not going to go with Loki. Right, which is which is funny because if you look at the history of their interactions, hers have been on the losing end every single time when she's come up against Loki. Mm -hmm. So how dare oh, yeah. she I mean, have the you know the the gall to say no 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 let me do you can't I can't really you clearly don't know how to handle this asset and he clearly does yeah it, it, because you know. to think about it he was he was kidnapped he was captured right mm -hmm. and and he's being made to work for them now he has gotten Loki much much further in doing things for them than you have you have done nothing. But you know, antagonize him and and make yes. him less useful to your efforts. Well, although to be fair, to be fair to her, and this is a little thing we get at the beginning of it, is that Loki's cause a lot of problems on the timeline. The Loki's do not like to stay put. They do not like to follow the path that the timekeepers have set out for them. So they go out. They become variants. Right. Uh, we, we we see a. Uh, Frost Giant Loki, we see a Hulk Loki, which I liked. Um, we see Loki winning the Tour de France, so that was cool. Uh, <laughs> which just, I love that just because it just, it just speaks of another bet that, right. that Loki... Right, 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 know, right, right, right. Says, right. Uh, you gotta go get me the cup from the Tour de France now. Alright, I'll go get the cup. <laughs> Let's That's go funny. And, win the Tour de France because that and I just love for me I love the idea that the Norse gods like between the um, Prose Edda and the Dawn of uh, the Avengers they're just always goofing off playing yeah. pranks making stupid bets and right. just... maybe in this universe because Loki wins the Tour de France one year maybe uh, what's his name doesn't get in trouble Lance Armstrong who knows? Yeah, well, it breaks the streak and it never raises suspicion. There you go. Ah, <laughs> uh, he would have gotten away with it too. Uh, actually, what got him in trouble was that they they had meticulous records of all of the doping he did. Because even if you lose, it's still against the rules to dope. Well, technically, that's not true because numbers two through eight were also doping heavily, and nobody else got in trouble. I think even if you lose, you do get suspensions, but it was worse know. because I mean, he won. All I know is nobody. He was made a martyr, and, and nobody oh, else yeah. was touched. Every single other person, up to number one through number eight, were all doping. We're all caught doping. Yeah, he's I think the one they might that have got all turned, turned evidence on him, too. So <laughs> I think they all turned evidence on him, too. So, but, Yeah, but without turning themselves. You know what I mean? So it, it, it was a little oh, bit... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I know what you're saying, but that's normally how those things go is yeah. they... The guy who's because the, the, they're trying to figure out who's the one in charge of the doping, and at least according to the records, Lance was very uh, the consummate comp competitor that he is. He was very meticulous about this is this is you know this is when we draw the blood, this is when we put the blood back in, and it's it's a whole thing you do. Yeah, no, but, no, but uh, it, it wasn't wildly different than what everybody else was doing. It's just that he was in number one, mm -hmm. managed to win, and that's like that's the guy we got to go after. 
Yeah. Well, that's that happens. That happens. Yeah. You know. And uh you know. Yeah, and of course and it's interesting because we really only have the records of his doping from his later wins when mm. he came back. So we don't know if he actually won the first few on his own or not. But of course because he was caught doping, everything becomes tainted. So Right, right. But but I mean the entirety yeah. of the sport is tainted. <laughs> yeah, well although to be fair, like you know <laughs> they, they they tend to they tend to they tend to have moments like that when someone gets too blatant about it. Fair and enough. to that extent, that. you know, that the, makes sense. you know nobody minds you nobody right. minds you doping so long as you're being subtle and no one's starting to say that's not you know what's right. you know it's like it's like when they had the big home run derbies and then it was like you know this is kind of weird yeah. yeah these guys are all hitting these balls you know it, it it was just a lot right then and basically you could look at the guys you could see they put on a lot of weight you know and yeah likewise and that's the thing is when Lance Armstrong just keeps on winning really if you were smart. And, 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 I, and I think the, the, the thing that people objected to is it ruins the image, this narrative that the game yeah. is fair. If you take that away, then the reason for sport existing as an entertainment uh, venue loses its integrity. Yeah. And that I mean, you, you, can't, know, you can't have the public lose, lose um, faith in the integrity of the sport in order for them to be able to still sell ads. Exactly. 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 So, you know, that's that's yeah. what happened to Pearl Lance, and maybe Loki could have could have stopped all that. But as we know, the, it didn't happen in our timeline. Yeah, the 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 timekeepers said no. Lance has to go down. Right. So <laughs> blame the timekeepers in the secret timeline. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yes, they're very flawed. Uh, <laughs> but. We go into we go into Rock's cart and we meet uh, the first person who's under a glamour, and I believe they say he's under a glamour. Do that? I don't think they say. He, I don't know if they use, enchantment. That's what they use. Did they did they say the word enchantment in this one? I thought they didn't oh, start or, using that to the next episode. Oh, okay. Maybe, perhaps you're right. Yes, but either way, but we see that yes, the the one guy who looks so familiar, and of course I've already closed the IMDb, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. Um, the jock dude? No, no, no. The first guy, the guy who was buying the plants. Oh, 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 oh. Interesting. I didn't. Yeah, because he was the first guy. Because he jumps from he jumps from he jumps to the um the the TVA agent, and then she takes it off. And by the way, I, I do love how they really got really excellent actors to play Tom Hiddleston in this. Mm. Uh, you know, you know what I mean? Like the, they're all people who very much, um, were able in their presentation to, to, if not look like Loki, at least to act like Loki. And I'm trying to see if they have, uh, yeah. Hunter B15 is the one that does not trust Loki. Uh, that's, uh, Winmi Mosaku and, Sasha Lane is Hunter C twenty. That's the one that gets uh, mm. taken over. And I think I've seen that actress in uh, in episodes of my God, which I one? I can't rem- um, the 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 one who gets glamoured. Um, oh, that yeah, she was in Lovecraft Country. She uh, was her, uh, something else, uh, like either Dark, I think, or oh. well, I mean, she does work a lot. Um, yeah, I can't quite place it. It's a very, very uh, unique and specific look. Um, yeah. I can't quite place it, but I've seen her in something else. She's very good. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's been in a lot of stuff. It uh, might have been Black up. Mirror, if I'm not mistaken. But Yeah, there be. we go. I think it was the, Lucius Baston is the male shopper, yeah. Mm. And let's see what else he's been in. He's been in Loki. Oh, he's in, oh he was also in under, That's what, He was also in Lovecraft Country. Mm. So apparently that's why I knew him because they pulled a lot of people from Lovecraft Country to be in here. So good. <laughs> it's a good show, by the way, Lovecraft Country. Highly I've heard. Good. I haven't gotten into it yet, but I've heard it's really good. Yeah, it's really good. It is really exciting and uh, powerful and just fun to watch. And just pulling up B uh, twenty here. She Lovecraft. Oh, she's also in Fantastic Beasts. 
Oh, she was in, uh, oh, she was also in Batman v Superman. She was, uh, Kahina Ziri. I, I don't know. I don't know if that's a Kryptonian name or not. But, <laughs> um, uh, uh, Winmi uh, Mosaka. Uh, oh, 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 B15. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she was in Batman vs. Superman. That's what it says here, yep. And Lovecraft Country, she's also in Fantastic uh, Beasts and Where to Find Them. She was Beryl. Interesting. So if you've seen any of those, you've seen her at her finest. Um, yes, but uh, so first it's it, first it jumps into her, and we do see that they are having their little their little conversation as they go about the store and talking and Loki is, you know, and she's like all mad at him because, you know, obviously she, you know, how is he a God of mischief if he's working for the man? He's like, I'm not working for them. I'm doing my own thing. Do you know how hard it was to gain their trust? You know, and really being the, and again, is he lying? We don't know. He is definitely, whatever he's saying, he is, he is saying, you know, we're, you know, what what is happening is he is he is really making a good case for why he actually is manipulating everyone, which is why maybe you know um, uh, B twenty should not have trusted him, or sorry, B fifteen should not have trusted him because yeah, maybe he actually was plotting this the whole time. I almost see it this way: like he found himself in a strange situation. And he's trying to piece together what I can make out of it. He is the god of mischief, so to him it's just like, oh, what a fun game. What can I do? Ooh, I wonder what this does. And he's sort of just having fun. I don't think he really knows. It's like the Joker in The Dark Knight when he says, I'm like a dog chasing a car. I wouldn't know what to do with it if I ever caught one. Right? So yeah. I think he's in this place where he's just like, oh, I wonder what this is. He doesn't really have a plan, but he's like, oh, that might be fun. Hey, let me go mess with the timekeepers. That's what I'll do. And if something well, else catches yeah. his fancy, he might yeah. just jump ship and go to another plan. I think yeah. he's just having fun. What what I think you can say is that he never has a plan, but he always he's always thinking six steps ahead. You know, he doesn't know where he doesn't he never has a plan, but he's always plotting. Exactly, he's always thinking, "How do I get into and out of this next mess?" And then we get you know we get a nice jumping. We meet Randy. Randy was great. Uh, again, someone filled with glorious purpose. And again, like I said, really great actors in this. And then we get the big guy, the big shopper. Um, and I'm, I don't know, man, because I kind of feel like they, they're so unclear in exactly how strong uh, any of these, uh, uh, how, how strong the, the Asgardians should be. Because they're, they're clearly, uh, that was Hawk Waits is country hoss is how they built him. Mm. Um, yeah, he's the big guy. And uh, although I guess there is an argument to be made that if you if you jack if you took over someone's body and jacked up their um, adrenaline, you know they could probably smash anybody pretty yeah, hard. You yeah, know? yeah. So, and it's not like she's, you know, he's going to be dead soon anyway. As you know, it's a rental. So she's, right, right. you know. If you overclock the body, you know. Um, exactly. She basically is matter? Captain America now. You right, know? right, right, right. You can, you can be Captain America for two seconds and your body will break down, but you can do it. Yeah, exactly. And which is also why she keeps on burning mm -hmm. through the bodies. Because she's, again, is really just delaying Loki. Keeping right. him talking, keeping him active keeping him from alerting the TVA about what she's doing. Uh, because we do see that, yes, we do see Lady Loki at the end, which, you know, by the time this, this comes comes out, you'll you probably have all heard that right. she she is actually listed as Sylvie in the credits. Which is so interesting because in, in the comics, didn't he create a mirror version of himself called Sylvie and that was a different character than Lady Well, Loki? there was actually a woman named Sylvie Lushton. Right. Who, and this is actually after... Hey, can I, can I, can I pause this for one second? We'll, sure, we'll start ahead. on Sylvie Lushton right quick. I just got to go take care of something. I'll be right yeah, back. You, you do. So, so uh, yeah, tell me so, more about... So Sylvie Lushton was essentially a human woman that Loki had imbued with powers to essentially groom her to be the new Enchantress. Because at that point in history, the Enchantress 
had died during one of the recent cycles of Ragnarok, and Loki missed her. So Loki brings her back as uh, the Enchantress. She joins a group of young... They essentially was a group of other super of young supervillains called the Young Masters, because uh, they were the Masters of Evil, and mm. they were fighting the Young Avengers, because that's the supervillain group who fights the Avengers, is the Masters of Evil fight the Avengers. So um, that is that is who Sylvie Lushton is. Um, her current whereabouts, I don't know in mm. comic books, but honestly, so many people, you don't know what their current whereabouts are. That's That's just comic books. You know, some other writer will bring them back someday, you know. But, right. uh, so, yeah, so that's who Sylvie Lushton is, who this Sylvie, and there is a little blink if you miss it scene, apparently, where you do see on one of the Loki variant um, files, there is this little thing that says Sylvie Lofi's daughter. Oh. L- which Lofi's actually... Daughter, not Lofison? Well, yes, because it was a daughter. Uh, <laughs> that's that's actually how how the naming convention works in uh, Norse. So, oh, is that right? Yes, you will actually will see people who have the daughter last name. Um, and usually, it was if you were someone's daughter, you were their daughter. If you were their son, you were their son. And it's it's like that in Arabic too. Ibn whatever, Ibn whatever. Sometimes it, p- these Arabic yeah. people have long long names. Ibn this, Ibn this, and it just means son of this, son of this, son of this. Yeah. And mm. that's and that's how that so that and so yeah so that's similar in the Norse tradition. Obviously, the daughters' names eventually fell out of favor, and when it all got ang- anglicized. But mm. you will, uh, from every so often, if you actually go to Norway or any of the Scandinavian countries, you will be, meet people with a daughter last name, um, and that is now, would it would it say daughter or would it say whatever word means daughter in their well, no, no, it's D O T T E R. Daughter. Oh, it's actually it's actually da- the word daughter is actually a uh, you know s- uh, Slavo-Germanic name or a Slavo-Germanic oh. word. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. English. It's a it's it's a, it's a bunch of hodgepodge yeah. of people that wandered across those uh, crazy islands up in the north. Um, <laughs> anyway, but so yeah, so this is Sylvie, and. She drops her bombs onto the timeline, then goes through the, through the portal, and we see um, we see Mo- Mobius and their gang catch up to him as he just he he ha- pauses for a moment, then decides to go through the door. And and that's credit to the work Mobius put in, the fact that a captured. You know, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, inmate mm-hmm. would even think twice before escaping. He felt bad. He felt bad leaving him out in the lurch because he felt a bit of kinship with him. He wanted to help him, and that mm-hmm. just shows you how good Mobius is at his job. Yeah, and it is. I mean, it's a, it's a. That is true. Although there's, you know, this is where it goes into these layers and levels on things. Because, and again, because I don't think Loki plans, but mm-hmm. he's always scheming, mm-hmm. like, like we mm-hmm. said. Or he does, or like his plans, his plans are always, like, there's an end point, and then there's a lot of improv in the end. And it's, like like all improv. And I feel like even the end point changes based yeah. on whatever makes him feel good at the moment. Yeah, you know, like real improv, you're just trying to get to that point where we get the laugh. Mm. Just going for the laugh, or going for the gut punch, we're going yeah. for that emotional reaction, you know, whatever we're going to get, we're going to work our way there. And we, we know we want to get to something and now we've got to figure out how we're going to get there. But, um, so even when he goes through, there's a part of me that wonders, is he going through so that they can track her because he knows they have his temporal aura and he knows that if she goes through, they're never going to find her again. Mm. Hmm. Because she will have disappeared through the door, and there's no way for them to catch her. But if he if he goes through the door, then maybe his temporal aura is going to be trackable to them. They can find him on the timeline. So if that's the case, if he is really trying to help the Time Variance Authority, 
What do you think is motivating him to do that? Like the well, only that's I- only a possibility. That's what he's doing, and that that's sort of the thing. It's like um, when when he's and again, where it could be multiple layers on multiple things. He could be he he one, and from their perspective, he went through the door. He went through the door, perhaps to escape. But if they catch him. You know, first that the words out of his mouth. Said, well, of course, I knew you'd track my. I mm-hmm. knew you had my temporal order. I knew you'd track my temporal order, and you would never find her again if you didn't have me there as a guide for you to track. Now, would you? Because that is what he does. And although it's interesting, but as as we see that, and we'll see where they go next uh, next week, but. Uh, as we just before she leaves, we see the bombs are going off. We see the timeline splittering. Um, she's blowing up things. She blows up stuff on Ego. She blows up stuff on Nowhere. She blows up stuff in Asgard. Uh, there's a lot of interesting places that got knocked out of the timeline. So, and we see the thing branching out. And we see everyone getting ready to fight. Because we see all of all, now all of the TVA agents are being deployed all over the the timeline to stop these branches, and we'll see what happens next week, Maz. Uh, any final thoughts her from you? Plan is like, what does she want from the timekeepers? Why does she want to destroy them? Or like, what's her what's her motivation? You what is your know, best guess? My best guess. Is well, my actual best guess is um, I don't think she knows either. Uh. I think as much as she is saying she's got a plan, hmm. I don't think her plan is as much a plan as she says it's a plan. I think she has a plan to get to, but much like you know, a dog yeah. chasing a car, right? When she right. gets that car. You know, and I don't want to get into territory for next episode, but like certain characteristics of her personality just point to that. Exactly, she's she's a bit of a petulant child, throwing tantrums at times. So yeah. I, that, I could see that. Well, you know, I mean, that is she is a Loki, right? And Loki is to a grand extent a petulant child. Um, I'm very excited to see more, and we'll talk about more about that when we we'll talk about the next episode, but. Yeah, there's a lot going on there, and I'm really hoping we get a lot more of what the lives of these Lokis were. Because mm. I think there's a lot more that even they don't know that they're going to discover as they wow. go through this adventure. So, like, All right, Maz. <laughs> this yeah. is the first time Loki is made aware that there are other variants of him. I mean, this is the first time he's he's finding out about the Time Variance Authority and their control that they, that they have over things. But... Is this his first time waking up to the fact that there are other Lokis? Or has he um, been sort of aware of the fact that there are other Lokis or other timelines? Well, then it makes you know, me think of that moment where he sees something happen on screen that didn't happen. He goes, what is this? This is obviously a lie. This never happened. So that idea that it could be it wasn't even there. Yeah, you know, no. Well, I mean, I don't think unless you are a sorcerer working with time, uh, the idea of multiple parallel possible timelines maybe does not even register with you. And uh, honestly, they may not even register with someone like Dr. Strange because to him, those are all just potential timelines. He doesn't imagine that they might actually actively exist. Hmm. And that's hmm. the real question because if they actually exist, and that is actually one of those interesting questions here because the TVA knows if a very if a timeline goes past red, they can't prune it. Oh, maybe at suggests, that point they would have to kill the whole timeline in order to reshift the balance. If they could, if oh. they have that power, hmm. that's the question. Yeah, you see, that's where things get a little more convoluted. So, you know, you you know when they say because I actually think it means they can't. That basically. There is this multiverse. There are these what-if worlds that exist because they couldn't stop them. Or they know that when they get to this point, there's no way to stop them. 
Right. Yeah, that's that, the real that fear. Not that they would happens. not that they would have to kill the timeline, but that they can't any longer. So they need exactly. to stop it. Hmm. Mm-hmm. That makes a lot of sense. I think that's the, I think that's what they're going for with that. Yeah. I, All I like right, that. Mozzie. Um it's a great show, without a doubt, and I'm looking forward to talking about this for the next few weeks with you. Uh, if someone wants to talk with you about it, Moz, how can they find you? Oh, they can email me at mozmanzor at gmail.com or find me on Facebook under Moz Manzora. That's M-O-Z-Z-M-A-N-Z-O-O-R. And, of course, you can always write to me in that old-fashioned email way that we are mothers and fathers once said at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter. They like to tweet things like sometimes uh, Legends of Tomorrow when I remember and I don't fall asleep. Uh, <laughs> at Charlie Yesser, that's C-H-A-R-L-I-E-S-S-E-R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing. <laughs> Thank you, Maz. Alas, me silly land lovers. I don't think that makes sense. <laughs> but you made it to another episode of Four Stream Ahead. Come back again next week as we once again sail the mystical timey seas, the timey wimey seas of Loki. Arg. Arg.